Okay. Okay, so let's continue with our program and uh, so welcome everyone. And uh, our second speaker is Andre Hulik and he will be talking about G-structure, G-algebraids and extended geometries. Thank so, you. Andre, please. Uh, thanks, uh, and thanks to the organizers for, for giving me opportunity to, to speak here. Um, so um, hopefully it will be uh, interesting for some of you at least, uh, and instructive. So so this is an, I, I, I took this to be an overview of, of extended geometries, which I'm going to talk about uh, in a bit. But, but parts of it are based on work with, with Friedrich and, and Mark Bakden, who's also here maybe, and Dan Waldrum. So, so if, you, if you find these things interesting, you, you might look at our paper later on or chat with one of us. Um, okay, so, so with that said, uh, I'll start. So, uh, so it turns out that um, the normal geometry we, we know from high school, uh, I guess not high school, university, the Riemannian geometry uh, is sort of, um, right tool for studying particle physics and 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 related phenomena and um, and and also uh, generally uh, sorry uh, uh, gr is is well formulated in 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 that framework. Whereas if we if we go to extended objects in uh, what what Alex was talking about like strings and brains, it, it turns out to be not sufficient uh, type of geometry and and we need some sort of extension. Of, of, of this classical geometry. Uh, and, and there are these two levels of extension I'm gonna talk about. One of them I, I denote by GG. Oh, do you see my cursor? It's, it's really small, but I guess I should maybe, I should maybe choose some color and, and like point towards stuff. So, so generalized geometry will be one extension suitable for describing dynamics of strings. And, and the target space effect affection being supergravity and for, for brains and M theory, it will be the exceptional generalized geometry. So what I'm not, I, I'd like to stress that I'm not talking in, in, this, in, in this presentation, I'm not talking about DFT and EFT, uh, double field theory and, uh, and exceptional field theory, where, which is slightly different and, and it could be thought of as an extension of, of generalized geometry and except, uh, exceptional generalized geometry. Uh, roughly speaking, at this point, it's it's the uh, we're gonna be studying fixed uh, base space manifold with certain dimension, which is the physical manifold, and and uh, with some extended uh, bundles over it. But but we won't be changing the base dimensional manifold. Whereas in DFT, we're actually extending that base as well, and and then we're we're choosing some section constraint, and and we can actually truncate down to generalized geometry and exceptional generalized geometry. But we can we can just stay at the level of generalized geometry and exceptional generalized geometry, and everything's fine there. And we can we can already understand interesting features of, of those extended object dynamics. So 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 uh, this is a content of the talk. I, I'm gonna uh, quickly um, go over what the G structures are in classical geometry and how how they might be useful for us to to go into these uh, generalized or extended geometries in, in a natural way. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what the uh, very quickly what G structure is and associated bundles for for given G structures and structure group reduction. Um, then uh, I will I will go to what we what we um, sort of introduced with with Friedrich Mark and and Dan in in our paper uh, which is called G algebraid and and I'll give you some uh, brief introduction into what it generalizes and how it's kind of useful. And and if time permits, uh, I, I will I will discuss some examples of, of these geometries so that you have something more solid in, in your hands. Okay, um, so let's start with the uh, first topic, uh, G structures. So G structures they are really uh, a study of this principal vibration where we have a. a, a group G uh, or G torsor over manifold M, and and these uh, these. It, the whole talk will be really about choosing what this G is up here. So, so in, in normal geometry, as we know it, uh, you know, this should be really thought of as a, a bundle of frames. And, and if we have no extra structure, uh, the frame uh, frames are really uh, living in GLN. So, so we have normal frames with no extra added structure. So, so the, their G will be GLN. Um, 
you, you might also know it from I don't know, describing Yang mills where the group will be UN and it will have nothing to do with the uh, underlying space dimension. So N could be something totally different than the dimension of the base space. Okay, uh, but uh, then if we if we have this principal vibration, interesting thing we can we can do uh, then is uh, that we can construct associated bundles. So this wasn't a vector bundle, right? Uh, that's sort of a linear structure, but but we can construct associated bundle, which is a, a vector bundle of some kind, and we do that by by choosing a representation of our um, uh, group, the structure group, uh, uh, this guy, and and associating it to the uh, to construct this associated bundle and which is which is a vector bundle and and it's it's really just about choosing which representation uh, uh, we pick for for GLN and it just gives us natural bundles which appear all over the place so so just you know to give you the most natural example if, if you choose fundamental for GLN you, you, you get the uh, tangent space over over M um, or or if you chose R times uh, um, anti-fundamental, uh, you, you would get this adjoint bundle, which which will play a role later on. So so I, I denote it by add f. Uh, it's tm tensor t star m, and we can we can do various things. We can tensor wraps and, and associate them and, and construct these new bundles. So so it's 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 a nice uh, framework where we can we can see all the vector bundles as uh, on on an equal footing. Uh, another thing which is which is useful to to know about uh, is is reduction of structure group, which has been studied in in classical geometry for ages. And 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 typical realization you, you probably know about is is this reduction to SON from GLN. So if if you do that, you you restrict yourself from general frames to to orthogonal frames, and by so doing, you have picked some distinguished metric. So usually, when when you do this kind of reduction. You're uh, you're getting some uh, invariant tensors in your in your geometry, so so you can do SP maybe SU and getting symplectic structures and Hermitian structures and all sorts of uh, interesting uh, geometric stuff in in the game. Um, right, but we're, we're gonna do something slightly opposite in a way. We're not gonna reduce the structure group, but we're gonna extend it instead. What I mean by that we uh, is that. We, we will have a, a manifold of dimension D, say, and, and uh, there will be this GL, well, N, I, I chose N here. So GL uh, M, MN will be the base manifold and there, there will be GLN over it. But we'll try to embed this GLN in some bigger group where, where it uh, sits as a distinguished subgroup. And, and based on which groups we'll choose, it will, it will represent one of those extended geometries. So, so uh, we're really uh, trying to uh, replace uh, the G, uh, GLN by something bigger. So what will be these groups? Now without any um, um, motivation, it will be uh, these two in particular. So ONN uh, and ENN. What, what I mean by that is ONN. Uh, sorry, ONN is the uh, split form of O2N uh, um, orthogonal group, and ENN is the same thing for for exceptional uh, class of, of the of the groups. So so these uh, so ONN you, you might probably you know um, get a good grasp of, but ENN are maybe a little bit more arcane, and it's often useful to, to really see them uh, as something decomposed under the GLN which sits inside. I, I'll, I'm going to show you uh, um, in, uh, in in some more detail how, how GLN sits inside ONN and ENN, but for now, uh, I'll just say that if you look at the Lie algebras and, and identify this GLN inside, uh, you can see that that actually ONN is nothing else than GLN plus uh, this second uh, wedge power of, of fundamental representation of GLN and second wedge power of the anti-fundamental. Anti and same uh, similar structure holds for ENN. So here, if you if you identify the GLN inside, you, you can see that it's it's just being extended by not two forms and two two vectors, but by three forms, three vectors. Sorry, three. Uh, Three vectors, three forms, six vectors, and uh, six forms. So, so it yeah, it's something maybe more relatable to think about it in this GLN decomposition. Okay. So, so another thing which uh, which should be stressed uh, about the um, 
normal geometry as we as we know it is this gauge structure we have so so all the objects we know in in, in normal geometry are are usually something uh, uh, nicely behaving with respect to diffeomorphism group right so so we have diffeomorphism group of m and uh, uh, Everything we construct, all the tensors and stuff, they, they behave nicely with respect to uh, diffeomorphisms of, of the of the underlying manifold. Uh, another uh, uh, thing to uh, to say at this point is that if I if I look at the tangent um, if I look at the tangent uh, map of of the of the diffeomorphism, uh, it takes values in this at f uh, bundle as I as I uh, describe it before. It, it's really just something you know in in GLN, and there will be interest. Uh, there will be useful for for generalization later on. So uh, another fact which you you are all familiar with is that if you if you look at the Lie algebra of this infinite dimensional Lie group, you get the um, little diff, and and that's actually. Um, at least the, the connected component would be isomorphic to, to vector fields. And the, the way you actually send those vector fields into diff is, is via Lie bracket or Lie derivative. And, and it's good to separate it into these two uh, bits. This one I would call transport term. And this one, um, I don't know what, what do we call it right now. But, but uh, the, the important thing is that it, it's actually, you know, if I spell out the indices here, it will be some GLN matrix. So, so if you see that you have this transport term and something what rotates whatever you act on with the with the GLN uh, matrix. So, so, or or in other words, uh, later on, most importantly, something in in this add F uh, bundle. Okay. So, so with and and in a sense, this this uh, Lie uh, bracket is is a unique natural object. So what I mean by natural is that I'm not using any connections and stuff. It's the first order uh, differential operator, and and it's it's the only thing you can write down if you if you search for first order operator which is natural and and it's uh, covariant under those diffeomorphisms as I just mm, described. Okay, so so now. Uh, you can you can perform various generalizations, and uh, one of them for you know uh, there will be one for each of those uh, structure groups. But I'll I'll just point out what it is for for ODD here. So so here you're actually replacing uh, diffeomorphisms by generalized diffeomorphisms, and these are really um, uh, semi-direct product of of diff and and closed two forms. And and you should really think of it as as an extension and uh, you know and encapsulate in this uh, short exit sequence. And this adjoint bundle here uh, is is a uh, is again associated bundle, uh, which which we've uh, which is now spelled out in uh, with respect to this GLN subgroup. And and you can see it would it would split into these uh, three bits into uh, as I uh, that that just you know reflects what I said already about O O N N group. And it has this uh, beta transformation, B transformation, and GLN. So there are two vectors, two forms, and, and uh, uh, GLN part. So GLN part is that uh, should be thought of as that you know GLN from from the previous vanilla um, geometry, but uh, these extra bits will will play their role in in the extension. So 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 now again. Uh, we should we should examine what the gauge structure is uh, infinite assembly, and if we look at that, uh, we we identify uh, that um, that there is a Lie uh, bracket which uh, which is slightly different now, but but it actually has the same form as before, namely that there is this transport term, and then what was there before? Uh, so so you remember there was some uh, transformation in that ADF bundle. But now it's it's actually a transformation in ODD such that it it sort of preserves that um, G structure which which underlies our uh, construction. And and uh, so so similarly it would it will work for uh, for exceptional geometry. But uh, so right so that's that's that. Um, uh, so these may be right. I, I I will later on focus on an example. Uh, uh, in an exceptional uh, setup, and and I just wanted to give you this table here because 
people, you know, normally you just talk about these exceptional groups, but you can actually extend this series uh, in, in lower dimensions, but no one really does that because those start to be identified with the classical groups we know. So, so if we, if we start, you know, if we start cutting the, um, If we start cutting these uh, dots from left, right, we, we remove, we're moving down in the dimensions, and, and eventually, if we if we cut this one, uh, we get actually SO55. <laughs> Sorry. So so we get SO55. If we cut one more, uh, we get SL5, and and so on. So I'll I'll in particular focus on this SL5, which is maybe the most relatable from these, and still encapsulate some some interesting features. Okay, so now we've uh, covered some basics of uh, of uh, G structures and associated bundles in uh, in very brief terms. I'll, I'll I'll tell you what the algebraoid is. So so the algebraoid and and various types of algebraoids and and how we can actually generalize them into some interesting definition. So um so the algebraoid it's something very natural. It it actually is something what sort of merges these two uh, omnipresent uh, op objects in, 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 in physics and mathematics, the um, tangent bundles and, and, and Lie algebras, or maybe Lie algebra uh, bundles over, over M. So, so if we, if we yeah, I, I'm not going to uh, go into details, but, but I'll show you an example first, that, that's, the, that's the Lie algebraoid. And, and so, so what is that? It's, it's really a bundle over M uh, with an extra map into tangent space. So, so, so this map we call anchor map. And this is the usual projection, so it should commute like that. And there's a there's a couple extra structures, so it's not just a bundle, but a, uh, it has a bracket on itself, uh, and that bracket satisfies some properties. Uh, so so namely, uh, it's compatible with the anchor map, meaning that if I if I uh, pull that uh, bracket from 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 A to uh, to T M. Uh, it should it should collide with the usual commutator in in TM. So that's one of the uh, compatibility structures. So that's the intertwining with row. Uh, what I said here. Um, it it it's it's anti-symmetric. That that still like what we know from from the usual um, uh, commutator on TM, and and it satisfies Jacobi identity. And, and later on, uh, when we move to uh, generalizations of this of this concept, we will um, relax some of those constraints or conditions. Um, when, I, when I said that, that it sort of merges these two um, concepts of, of tension space and, and um, um, algebraoid uh, uh, over, over a manifold, I, I just meant that, you know, if I, if I take identity for my anchor, it, it's really, you know, uh, having like TM and TM here over M, so just having TM. And if we instead have a anchor being zero, we can we can identify this with the Lie algebra over each point in our manifold. So, so it sort of uh, has these two uh, uh, packed nicely together in one definition. Okay, uh, right. So 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 these Lie algebras, they are they are quite nice. They uh, they they pretty much work like like TM. It's just nice extension of it. So so what I mean by that, we we can define a Durham operator on them. We can study forms valued in in, in a, and uh, yeah, various things just extend to uh, to what we know from from studying TM over M. Whereas current algebraids, they are the first generalization I, I want to talk about uh, of, of the Lie algebraid, and then we'll go even further and, and sort of merge them in one unified definition. So, so the current algebraids, they are, um, so, so the previous Lie algebraid, that, that was really the realm of, of uh, GLN structures. Now, if I, if I go to the realm of ONN structures, that's the right object to work with. So, so current algebra is is something where where this. Uh, so it could be something general here, but but you can think of this T M T star M here as a as a um, uh, bundle over M. It, it again has this anchor map and and it's uh, it's furnished with a bracket, but there are some uh, relaxed conditions on it. So uh, just to say. Um, uh, 
this really is a natural object in string theory, as, as you as you might have seen partially in, in Alexis' talk. It, it actually encodes the infinitesimal transformations of of, of uh, stringy sigma model. Uh, um, right. So so this should be taken in quotation marks because it gets more general. But but just for you know having something concrete in your minds, that uh, I, I just put this uh, TM plus T star M. This is actually a associated bundle of that ONN. It's a fundamental of ONN, seen as decomposed under GLN inside that ONN. So so that's why it's TM plus T star M. Right. Um, so, so this bracket we we have on it. Uh, usually, you, you meet two different uh, groups of people. Uh, some would uh, put Dorfman bracket as as more uh, fundamental, and some uh, would put the current bracket as more fundamental. Dor uh, so, so the problem is that uh, now the bracket, the Dorfman bracket, which uh, I like more, and I guess Friedrich likes more, uh, is that um, as as more fundamental is that. It's, it's the, the problem is that it's not anti-symmetric anymore, which is not really a problem, but people might mm, get confused and, and scared of that. And uh, But it, it has another nice properties we want to keep, like uh, uh, Jacobi identity still holds. But yeah, it, it just happens not to be um, anti-symmetric, like the, like the Lie bracket or Lie algebraic bracket. However, it's very mildly uh, uh, non-anti-symmetric uh, in a sense that um, I will describe later. Um, so so that's uh, that's maybe uh, good for now. there's a there's more structure though. there's a there's an inner product on on this uh, bundle e or TMT star m. So so there's this inner product or or pairing, canonical pairing in a sense, which uh, just you know takes two uh, two objects from e and and produces a number. It's just like metric would do. And and it's really you know uh, as I as I um, mentioned before uh, in these reductions it, if if you know that the structure group of this is O and N you know that there must be an invariant tensor and that invariant tensor if, of, of split signature will be some pairing of of, of signature N N so so that that's what I have here and there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of um, um, compatibility relations between these two objects. So um, right. So there is a, a just to say w w if I if I look at the anti uh, um, uh, sorry if I look at the symmetric part of the Dorfman bracket, it will actually. Uh, so if I if I uh, plug in two guys here, it will actually uh, be sort of de exact. So what I mean by that uh, uh, is that you know I, I take these two sections of E. Uh, I produce a uh, function out of them, and then I uh, create a form. And I, I, uh, there should be more stuff here, but I don't want to confuse people with the notation. So, so that form, if I identify it with this bit in my TM plus D star M, that's how I that's how I can understand this formula. So, so uh, it turns out that the symmetric part of um, uh, so uh, of of the Dorfman bracket is D exact in a in a sense. And that will be crucial for for an extension of this definition. All right, and now to the um, to the G algebra. So G algebra should be something what sort of encapsulates those previous definitions and extends it further into uh, exceptional generalized geometry. So um, so it it turns out that we uh, we need to um, uh, generalize this uh, notion of of the of the metric here uh, or or pairing in the, in the e space. So uh, so the way to do that is is by uh, by actually um, uh, studying this triplet. Uh, so 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 G algebra would be a triplet for us. The, this G will be the structure group of the underlying G structure. Uh, this E will be uh, whatever is is the extension of of this TMT theorem or replacement thereof of of E. And N will be another space, uh, which we will uh, identify what it is in those previous examples. And there will be extra maps uh, going from E tensor E to N and, and the other way around. Uh, e also N should be uh, uh, thought of as inside of, of the second symmetric power of E. And so, so just to give you examples how, how the previous stuff fits inside, is that uh, um, we can find these triplets for Lie algebraids, 
when we choose GLN to be the structure group and uh, E to be RN and uh, uh, zero uh, or trivial representation associated bundle for, for this N. So, so there, uh, for that reason, we, we don't see any pairing in, in the case of Lie algebraoid because there's just, you know, um, there's just, it's just nonsensical to, to define something from E to, to zero. So, so, so this, this will really, you know, if we, if, if I, after I show, showed you the definition, you'll see that if you apply it in this particular triplet, you'll, you'll reconstruct the Lie algebraoid definition. So if I, if I, if I go to, ONN uh, structure group and and the uh, and uh, fundamental representation R to N, and and I add up this space R, just a trivial representation of ONN, and I and I um, run our technology and and uh, read of what what that object is, it will it will give us the current algebra that I I've introduced on the previous slide, so current, and this is Lee. Right, and and for uh, for E and N, uh, those representations are maybe uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, more complicated. But I'll show you an example uh, at the very end. So when we when we apply our definition of G algebra for uh, for the case of exceptional uh, algebra uh, exceptional uh, group, and and two distinguished representations E and N, I, I can't really tell you uh, because it depends on the dimensionality. Uh, how, how they look like. So, uh, but, but we will we will actually get what the right object is for uh, for the case of exceptional generalized geometry. Uh, right. So uh, there's an, another concept here which is important and and which already uh, showed up in in the in the previous uh, uh, cases uh, somehow secretly, and that is what what the isotropic space is. So so isotropic space we define as uh, something uh, so if if we take a space v inside e so e was that uh, defining bundle uh, it will be something what uh, I, I told you that this n uh, actually lives inside the symmetric power of e so we can take the second uh, tensor power of it and and project down to to that n space if we if we require that it's zero this will define isotropic space uh, and and uh, you can actually see that uh, if if this n is r it will be basically what do you know to be isotropic space in you know uh, symplectic geometry or in, from from other instances so but 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 here it's slightly more complicated and it turns out that if this n is not trivial uh, uh, so either zero or r though there could be more uh, different dimensionality isotropic spaces uh, so and, and that actually makes uh, stuff very interesting so just to give you an uh, um, just to fill in what these isotropic oh yeah I, I forgot to say that the Lagrangian is the maximally isotropic there. So, so those will be the ones which are which we are really interested in. Isotropic is anything what satisfies this condition, and Lagrangian will be maximal such space which satisfies this condition. So, what would this uh, what would these spaces be in, in these three examples? It will be just the original Rn here. It will be a half-dimensional subspace uh, in here, and it, uh, in in these ENN setups, it, it gets interesting because. There will always be this n-dimensional solution and n and minus one-dimensional solution, and we'll again we'll see in in a concrete example what these are, and and these are actually, actually um, related to different section um, constraints on f-theory, and and this will be this will be m m section constraint, m-theory section constraint, and and this will yield a two p section constraint. Right. Not that I'm gonna uh, discuss this any further, but we can maybe talk about it in uh, Getter or or any other means. So, so what what extra structure do we need? I, I said that we 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 have these two maps, but but again, we we need a structure uh, which was sort of uh, occurring in those previous examples. So obviously, we will need a bracket again, and and again, the bracket will will satisfy Jacobi identity. It will not be anti-symmetric. It was already not anti-symmetric in 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 the current algebra broad case, so that would be silly to, to have it um, sim, um, anti-symmetric. Uh, there's an anchor uh, with a, a 
property of you know being um, uh, with the same property as in the uh, Quran and Ali algebra. So that if we pull back that uh, bracket in the bigger space over to TM, uh, it, it's just uh, it's just identified with the commutator. And there's this D, there's this space D, which uh, sorry space. Uh, there's this map D, which goes from N to E. So uh, and uh, uh, this should really uh, be what uh, what generalizes what we've seen in in current algebra setup, because there I, I had my uh, space R and R to N. Uh, those could you know their associated bundles would be uh, maps, uh, and uh, um, going into this TM T term. And, and this D will really be the D uh, which takes functions and sends them to, to this form bit in, in the TM plus T star M. In, in the Lie algebraic case, there's no such an analog because uh, you, know, you just have the zero. So I had zero here and R. So you would have zero and TM, and, you know, just sending zero to TM. There's, there's nothing interesting in here. Uh, so right, so so the the conditions I already mentioned a uh, couple. So Jacobian identity is satisfied. This is the analog of of the D exactness I I, I showed you in the current algebra case. So uh, so again, if I take a symmetric part, uh, it will it will be uh, identified with this A tensor B. So this is something in E. E going to uh, to n, right? That's the projection to n, and then I know that D sends something from n to E, so so it's back. To, we're back to E, and that's where the bracket uh, uh, lives. So so it, it makes sense to 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 require this this condition, and then we have a couple more uh, conditions which might not be that important at this point. It's just to you know to to have a nice properties of uh, uh, sort of extension of linearity. Mm -hmm. So. I, again, maybe I'll just flash it here, and and if, if someone finds that interesting, uh, they can ask a question, or or um, we can discuss it uh, for later on. Okay, right. Uh, the important thing, and that was also uh, uh, the case for the previous stuff, is that uh, this Lee or generalization of Lee bracket, it it actually can act on all the possible associated bundles uh, within this G structure uh, setup and it and it preserves it so, so meaning that you know if, if you would uh, transform a, a frame in in that uh, um, in that G torsor it would it would still be the same frame in the in the in the in that uh, given um, structure group G right so um, right so so maybe uh, now very quickly you know I, I gave a lot of definitions here but maybe just to uh, motivate for someone who might not know that why ONN is is so prominent and why it pops up in 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 string theory uh, I, I guess you've seen seen it partially in Alex's talk but there you, you might already see some manifestation of that if you if you analyze Polyakov action for for string. So you see that you know this is the usual Polyakov action in, in light cone uh, gauge, and and it couples to GNB. If you if you identify the canonical momenta, you get this, and and you construct Hamiltonian. You can cast it in this o, ODD form in a way. So so you, you can you can put the piece and uh, d, this is sigma d sigma x into this two n dimensional vector, and and there will be some two n by two n matrix in the middle. So uh, so you, you actually see, so uh, this is by far not a you know um, rigorous way to see why why uh, generalized geometry has nothing uh, has something to do with string theory. But uh, I'm just trying to point out that there are already these objects uh, coupling in a in a nice way that they they live inside T M plus T star M, and and if you dig deeper, you you find find out that this is something natural. Uh, as a generalization of what what the metric should be in in the uh, in the generalized geometry, and so so objects actually, if if you treat them properly, they uh, they uh, recombine themselves in in some O and N um, covering objects. So so that's that's a that's something I, I wanted to uh, tell you. But but now now to examples and maybe 
since I, I don't have that much time, I, I'm going to actually pass to a, a exceptional uh, generalized geometry example because I, I pretty much fleshed out what it is in generalized geometry. So, so as I as I said before, these exceptional uh, generalized geometries they they are associated uh, to um, E and N structures, which might be maybe uh, not that familiar to people. But but uh, as I also said, if you if you cut enough dots from the left, at some point you get to the realm of, of classical groups. So so especially when when you uh, when you go down to E four, it's it's actually SL five group. So so if you know if I straighten up this this one um, uh, bullet, uh, I, I I actually get the SL five group. So uh, the underlying manifold here is is this four four dimensional thing. Uh, and and the the exceptional bundle uh, is uh, is this is this T M plus wedge to T star M. So what is the dimension of it? You, you can uh, you know you can easily count it. Uh, T M is four dimensional, and wedge to T T star M is six dimensional. So if I put them together, it's ten dimensional uh, bundle over a uh, four dimensional manifold. Uh, you know, uh, as I said, it, it's. Uh, we should think of it as an extension of you know, uh, of the GLN structure in a sense that we we have this SL5 and now there's GL4 inside and and uh, there's this wedge three TM and wedge three T star M that that's the decomposition I showed you uh, previously on the first slide we're just missing those six forms and six vectors because there's just not enough dimensions so so they're just trivial here. And and so if I if I just decompose everything under GLN, uh, I, I get these two bits. But if I uh, it, it's exactly crucial that that I have these two extra parts which intertwine these two uh, a priori independent uh, bundles put together. Uh, so 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 you see that three vectors they how how can they act here? They 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 might eat the two form and and produce a vector and, and three form. Uh, you can uh, uh, shove in the vector and, and produce a two vector. So, so that that's exactly what they do. And so, so therefore, this guy sends you from here to there, and and this one goes the other way around. Right. So the the n here is is this bundle. So uh, so the uh, um, uh, what is that? Uh, that's uh, uh, forms and four forms. And and I should maybe tell you what those other operations are here. So so the other operations uh, um, uh, were the D. So so the D uh, does something natural here. It it well it takes the uh, guys from so you remember it was the uh, map from N to E, right? And uh, so it takes something from this N bundle and sends it to E. So it can uh, it, it it actually works as a D uh, as the Durham D. Uh, so it, it takes one form and produces a two form. Uh, from four form on on four manifold you can go any higher. So it's just it just sends it to zero. So so that's what the D does. And the map from from E to N is is interesting. Uh, uh, that what it does is uh, is that it takes a it does two things actually. It uh, if I to know something from TM to be V and, and to form to be Omega, it, it produces something in T star M uh, by uh, uh, feeding this V inside Omega, therefore producing one form. And it also produces this four form bit, which is which it does by wedging two, uh, two forms together. So, so it, it actually lands in both of those parts of N. Right, so, so those are all the structures I, uh, we had before. Uh, the bracket uh, can be written down. I, I, I don't think I, I have time for that, and it wouldn't be particularly insightful. But, but you can write bracket on, on this, and, and everything works nicely together, and, and it gives you a sort of nice first example, non-trivial example of this exceptional um, uh, geometry uh, for, for E4. Um, uh, these were uh, just one last remark about this, is that um, uh, as I've written them here, this bundle E and N, they are decomposed under this GL4 living in SL5. But it's oftentimes useful to actually, uh, especially when, when I was writing down this, oh, it's, it's too high up. When I was writing down those tables, uh, G, E, N, N, 
I, I was actually uh, by these guys. They uh, these guys were supposed to be associated representations of that big group G, not not something uh, constructed out of the representations of the smaller one, and then pasting them together. So so these two guys they can actually be seen as such. And and if you if you uh, if I write down the SL five. Uh, one, two, three, four, right? So, so it's just these. Uh, it, it will be these representations uh, which play role of E and N. So, um, uh, so this is a, just second wedge uh, of of the fundamental, and then this will be the fourth wedge of fundamental of of SL five. So of SL five. So by, what I mean by this T is something you know, it's a fundamental of SL five, so it's something five dimensional. So these are. Uh, Two vectors made out of five-dimensional fundamental and four vectors, and and when you when you start reducing, you'll you'll get exactly these two spaces. So everything works nicely, and then you might wonder if you if you can study these uh, G algebraids maybe in in other setups. You you, you might uh, you might get uh, different structure groups, and uh, it, it's really it's really about fit uh, you know. Um, Putting these three things together, so so just having some structure group and then two uh, representations of it uh, and and bunch of extra structure which which will satisfy the the axioms I, I've I've given you and then then you know you, you're you, uh, you're good to go you, you can you can study various uh, uh, generalized geometries which maybe haven't been uh, considered before. I'm not saying that they might necessarily have something to do with uh, with physics but but at least for odd and uh, o uh, enn th those are um, those are definitely relevant in um, theory and string theory okay um sorry uh, just say oh right. uh, yeah i mean if you wish we still have a couple of minutes left so oh i, I guess i'm 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 done now and That's also we fine. can uh, we can pass to questions if there's any and so i i thank you for your attention and yeah, i'll be happy to receive questions if, if there's any confusion and or interest or yeah thank you thank you very much for a very nice talk and so now um are there any questions so Um, okay, so yeah, let's maybe let me maybe ask. Um, oh, okay, there's a question. Yeah, all right, thank you. Um, thank you. It was a it was a very nice talk. Um, so I don't know much about G algebras except for like the, the talk you just gave, obviously. But to my knowledge, Courant algebras are also um, uh, symplectic lead two algebras. Um, is there any way that sort of this G algebra framework you can you, you can uh, view in the setting as well as somehow like I don't know say G equivariant lead to algebraids or um, something happening over I don't know the classifying space of this group? Um, oh, I don't know. Um, that's, uh, that might be fair to advanced for for how at least I think about it. I don't know if Friedrich has a better answer to that perhaps, but um, um, I don't know. I yeah, so, 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 the, so Alex, the previous speaker has, has some, uh, some work along this direction, but, but like there is no, no, yeah, but like the, I think it's fair to say that we don't have like a, like such a general really one-to-one -one correspondence with some object in the graded, Geometry. Um, so I would say that it, it, this is not not that much known how to do at the moment. That's what okay. I would Okay. Okay. Well, maybe I'll talk to Alex. Uh, thanks in any case. Um, thanks again for the talk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Any other questions? Okay. So uh, maybe. Okay, so maybe then I, I can ask like, what is, what is your viewpoint on, so, so, so these, these things that you were demonstrating like these exceptional groups that the, the decomposition into the, into the third and the second wedges and, and things, mm -hmm. that, that's valid up to E6, right? Like, 
Right, right. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you can comment on like the perspective on the higher things or something. Right. So, that. so, so, it's true that I swept under under the rug. Very important thing that um everything works nicely up to e6 and and as people from exceptional general geometry know that there's there's not really nice extension into e7 and higher and um well there's two uh, uh there's two problems really there's a uh i guess well they are both conceptual in a way but uh so so one problem is that when you you can actually as i said you can extend this uh exceptional series in lower dimensions but you can go higher and one, well, why people don't usually do that is that when you cross that E8, right, you, you get into the realm of affine algebras and, and their representations will be something infinite dimensional. So you would have some infinite dimensional bundles over your manifold and that, that might maybe uh, be scary. And, uh, but but um, in, in M theory, um, these um, different exceptional groups they they correspond to 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 higher and higher dimensional uh, 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 higher and higher uh, dimensional uh, reductions or compactifications on some compact space so so naturally we should we should expect to have those occurring when when i say you know take 11 dimensional supergravity and 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 reduce it on 10 dimensional internal space and just leave time maybe as a as an external space so so there should be some e10 10, 10 for instance and and, and uh, it has been discussed for a long time that mm, relevance and, and importance are of E11, but I don't think it's be, uh, much progress has been made. Uh, it's been pushed a lot by uh, Peter West, but uh, but I think yeah, th there wasn't really I don't know uh, much understanding of it at, at some uh, and at some point uh, earlier this year, I, I I think some some papers actually occurred when when they formulate. Um, M theory in some uh, uh, um, E11 uh, framework, right? But but I, I forgot who the people were. Maybe Sandlab and 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 Hom or someone around those people. But, but yeah, th that's one problem. The another problem is is uh, is maybe less arcane, and that is that if you go to E7 and higher, you, you start losing uh, some of the nice properties, namely the that the symmetrization of that bracket is no longer the exact. And and uh, you you need to um, uh, relax that and and think of uh, a even bigger generalization of this G algebraic concept. And we're kind of thinking about that with with Friedrich and, and other people I mentioned before. So so that that's that's definitely easier step to go with, but still quite hard and and daunting to to think about. Okay, thank you. Any any other questions? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, Noriaki. Uh, uh, can I ask uh, the about possibility to generalize uh, the your structure uh, algebra structure to to the DFTN or EFT case? Oh, that, that's okay. very. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I I I didn't mean to interrupt you. Is that is that it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, right. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I uh, I was kind of hoping. So so yes. Um, so there uh, there should be there should be some sort of extension, even though it's it's not clear to me what. Uh, what those algebras should be in the in the case of DFT and EFT, but but I always like to think of if you if you know this uh, diagram of Warren, this this diamond diagram. Uh, as you as you, you you always have these four theories together. You, you have this F theory and an M theory, two uh, A theory and and T uh, theory, where where you manifest different parts of um, duality groups of your of your F theory, and and for each of them there should be some. Um, uh, some algebra actually. So what we're doing here, we're describing that that lower uh, bottom um, corner, but but it should be sort of extendable upstairs. Sorry, we're describing the M corner of, of the of the diamond, but but there should be uh, there should be an algebra for each of the corners. For for two A, we kind of understand, and even for two B by by just a reduction of the M. But uh, for T, for instance, which will be your DFT case, and and for F even, that there should be 
there should be a notion of of uh, uh, EFT and DFT algebraid, but but it's not clear to me what it what it's supposed to be like. Mm, there there's some there's some definitions of DFT algebraid by Larissa Yonke and and uh, other people, uh, right? Uh, for example, is Weizmann Weizmann proposed uh, uh, uh -huh. for example uh, a, a metric algebra, so called metric algebra in the DFT case. I see. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware. Thank you. The, uh, I'll, 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 uh, so maybe uh, I don't know the EFT case. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh -huh. Uh -huh. There are some, some uh, proposals uh, in the case of DFT. I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't know. Uh, but it would certainly be nice mm -hmm. and natural to have some. Algebra for for each of these corners of of the of you know uh, going into DFT and F theory basically and and, and completing the diagram in a, in a sense, mm -hmm. but uh, but again I, I guess it would be only doable in in low enough dimension and uh, for the similar reasons as I uh, similar complications as I described before that then the F theory would be something infinite dimensional and which might not be a problem but uh, might be a um, complicated thing to work with, but yeah, but definitely something to uh, to investigate uh, in depth. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much for the questions. I guess um, okay. Okay, I guess if there is no further questions, then let me uh, pause the recording. Stop.